All right, um, let's get this started with, I guess. Uh, first of all, good afternoon, at least in my case, to everyone who's watching this. Um, I have to say that this episode is a little bit behind schedule. I'm really sorry for that. The reason were simple, uh, simply, um, yeah, I had some, some personal health issues. I got my wisdom teeth out, the fi final ones that were still in, my, uh, in, in there. And uh, after that was finally done and over with, I also managed to nearly lose my voice and that also led to reschedule. So anyhow, I'm, I'm glad that we can finally now um, get this done and uh, that I, I now uh, am able um, to actually talk to you and you can hear me, I hope, and uh, tell you about what I have been up to, uh, what I'm going to do next, and also uh, tackle a, a couple of the questions that uh, uh, you as the Patreons, if you are Patreons, submitted for a little Q&A sheet. Um, the important stuff maybe out of the way first, um, if you're watching this live right now on this uh, nice uh, Saturday, May the 13th, then uh, you might already have noticed that we also have a live chat. It should be there if you are on desktop and there if you are on mobile. And you can use that also to ask questions that I will then try to uh, yeah, tackle during the Q&A segment. For anyone watching this recording afterwards, sorry, no chat, of course. All right, so what I have, what I have been up to, um, yeah, I, I hope that you noticed that uh, the day before yesterday, I think, I put out the new, uh, yeah, the first release candidate for the next stable Octoprint release, 133, so RC1 for that. And uh, this is also basically what I have been working on uh, since the last time that we talked. Um, there were a whole bunch of, of little annoyances and uh, improvements that went into that brand, uh, into that release candidate, and uh, also a couple of uh, bugs that I finally found and squashed. And um, yeah, so that was one part of what I did. Um, also, those of you who are um, supporting me on Patreon, which probably all of you watching this live right now are, um, uh, I also finally did the the survey of our um, yeah of our little um, uh, the survey the, sorry the evaluation of our survey that I did throughout the month of December, and boy did that eat a lot of time. So. Um, I spent something like two or three days doing nothing else but um, going through all those free form text fields that you had sent in and really, really great feedback that helped me a lot. It was just, yeah, it was just a lot of stuff to wade through and uh, yeah, trying to boil all that down into something that, uh, yeah, clustering it basically and then uh, also writing down the results that was something that I did after I finally had uh, waded through all that. And uh, to be quite honest, considering how long that took, I'm not sure I'll ever do something as big as that again. But yeah, who knows what the future holds. Um, it certainly was a, a whole new experience completely outside of what I normally do, like coding. Um, so that was nice and it also was great to yeah to get an idea of how all of you guys are using octoprint and in what setting and yeah what you are missing about it what um what you would like it what you what you would like to see it supporting things like that so i think i never had such a clear picture of my user base like after i i um evaluated the survey so huge thanks again for everyone uh, who participated um yeah and combined and uh, combined with that what i also did and have been doing the last couple of months also um what i finally fi finally finished was um basically merging those survey results with um with with what is currently on the on the bug tracker or rather on the issue tracker of, of octoprint with all those um feature requests that go into the one or the other direction. So what I basically did was trying to find general clusters for all of them and then merge them with the general clusters. I found about everything that yeah concerned features that you were missing or that you uh, wanted to see improve um, from the survey. And based on that, I created another little, yeah, um, let's call it a, a, a poll um, to allow uh, those of you at the $3 up level over on Patreon to uh, help me prioritize what 
of the, the feature clusters that identified that I identified there, I should try to tackle for um, yeah for 1.4.0, and uh, I can't promise that I'll manage to do all of what will come out of that basically because uh, yeah my, my my major focus is still keeping the so uh, software working and not rushing out features that break uh, everything half of, half of the time and I think this is probably the the yeah the approach that you can get all, all get behind I hope um, but yeah I'll do my best um, and what I also did uh, in our uh, yeah, during our, our little time of absence, basically, is that I finally got back to work a bit more on the new communication layer that I've been talking about, yeah, again and again over the past couple of months. Um, uh, I, I merged what I already had worked on back with the current development version and, uh, yeah, wrapped my head back around the architecture that I had thought up in there. Uh, did a couple of test prints. It identified what was still wonky. Uh, for example, the recents are currently not being processed properly. So if there are communication issues, then stuff is not as solid as I want it to be. So this will need to be fixed. Um, and I also noticed a, a bunch of things that I would still see in it that I need more flexible to better accommodate certain features that are now showing up in firmwares and um, yeah, for which I do not want to um, close down any potential paths to support, if this makes sense. Well, um, so there's still a lot of work to be done on that one, but at least it felt really, really good to finally get back to this and, and make some more progress in this direction, because this is something, as you might have noticed, when uh, if you're following me a bit longer in these little um, videos here uh, is something that I really, really want and I think I really, really need to get done as soon as possible. So, yeah. Um, also, um, I don't know if I mentioned, I think I mentioned it in the past as well, uh, that uh, Mark Hanapel, also known as Salandora, is currently working on a more granular permission system so that you can, uh, you, you have basically have more control what user types there are in the system and also what they may do and may not do with 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 regards to Octoprint itself. And uh, yeah, we talked a bit about that more. I did a couple of uh, code reviews and uh, I think we are really going to have a really nice system there. All right, so um, that brings me to what are the next steps, basically. Um, yeah, the COM layer, as I already mentioned, needs more work. I uh, need to further define the, the 1.4.0 roadmap, so whatever you guys uh, on the $3 Patreon tier and up decide on, I'll have to take a look at how to integrate that. And uh, yeah, of course the usual maintenance madness. So yeah, handling support requests and uh, taking a look at whatever comes in as with regards to bug, re bug uh, um, reports. Yeah, well, and of course uh, also somewhere down the road, I hope within the next week, but this depends a bit on your feedback about it. I also hope to turn the 133 release candidate one into the proper 133 stable release and get this out of the door as well to everyone. Um, if you are testing this, please also uh, report back on the bug tracker. There is a little uh, new issue there that basically is called something like, uh, I think I called it RC feedback and then for the 133 RC1. So even if everything works for you, totally fine and you have no problems at all, it would be great if you would give me a, a quick ping, something like everything works for me or, or something like that in that uh, ticket. So just that I know okay, there is a complete, uh, there is, there are no issues there because so far it, it always went like this. I put out an RC1, I didn't hear anything about it for a week. And then I always wondered, hmm, okay, so did anyone even test it or is it just fine? So a quick ping, everything is fine. Helps me tremendously, would be great. All right. Um, this is, uh, what, uh, yeah, this is what I wanted to tell you with uh, regards to what I have been up to and what I'm going to do next. Um, and with that, we can actually already start with our Q&A session. So there were a bunch of uh, questions 
in the sheet already so um, I'll just tackle five of them now then I'll take a look over at whatever you're writing up in the live chat if you are writing something up in the live chat because I think right now this here is a one viewer show <laughs> and um, yeah, and then uh, if if there is something, I'll tackle that. And otherwise, I still have something in backup. If we have uh, if we have time left, that I will then talk about. All right. So one question from the sheet was the uh, from from Julian um, who asked, "I have a variety of orange pies. What is the right way to make and distribute an OS image with Octoprint for those?" The last image I released was for Orange Pie in Facebook and made me mad concerning support people simply not reading manuals. So first of all, I have some bad news for you, Julian, because uh, yeah, the support will always drive you crazy from my personal experience, at least. Um, people or a, a lot of people um, simply do not read manuals or FAQs or anything at all. And uh, you have to constantly repeat what you already told them or at least tell them where to find. Um, where to find uh, the, the, the information that they are apparently looking for. So if you, yeah, if this is something that really drives you mad and really wants you to strangle people or something like that, I, I would not recommend getting into maintaining an image or something like that. Uh, but this is just my personal um, advice in that regard, because yeah, you really need to, mm, basically build up something like a thick skin for this kind of support questions. It just, yeah, you, you won't, you won't get around it. Sorry. Um, in general though, um, yeah, uh, if you, if you, um, want to distribute any, any OS specific image, be it now for an orange pie or something else like that, um, and and also maintain that uh, I, I I'm really would be happy to link to alternative community images for other machines than the Raspberry Pi. I mean, this is also basically what OctoPi is because OctoPi is maintained by Guy Schaeffer and not by me, even though I try to help where I can because it is the most used distribution and most common um, yeah, setup, I would say, also based on the survey results. But uh, yeah, still, I mean, if you have something and it's working and so, then just ping me with, yeah, p put it on up on some page, preferably hosted on HTTPS, you know, for security reasons, with uh, a little checksum also next to it so that users downloading it can verify that they in fact have your image and not something rogue and yeah, pro pro uh, possibly malicious. And uh, also some means to contact you as the image uh, creator in case of any kind of issues that can also be a GitHub link or something like that. And um, yeah, and then I can also, yeah, then I can look up and uh, look into putting this, uh, linking this from octoprint.org. So this is not a problem, I think. Um, the only thing that I can not offer is uh, also, yeah, officially supporting this in any way like uh, that I will drop everything that I'm doing and, and jump to solve whatever issues arise with that specific image because, sorry, but I, I simply cannot, I simply cannot do this. I, I do not have the resources. I always already have my hands completely full with Octoprint and even what I do on Octopi is something where I really, yeah, struggle sometimes to find the time for. So yeah, just, this just as, as, as a bit of gray, a bit, bit, a tiny bit tiny bit of grain of salt. This is not, this is not English. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, in general, just ping me and uh, I, I see, I'll see what I can do. All right. So the next question was from John and uh, that one was, uh, what made you want to 3D print originally? What do you print while developing? A bit off topic, but I'm curious. I suppose you wouldn't have started Octoprint without that fundamental interest, right? I really like that question because it made me think and ponder where, how, how did it even happen that I ended up here and talking about these kind of things. And um, yeah, I think uh, my first 3D printer I saw at Hacking at Random in the Netherlands in 2009 and found it completely and utterly fascinating and watching it like doing stuff and uh, then actually holding things that it had just printed from some file that someone designed on the on the campgrounds. Um, and yeah, I, I really loved the idea. 
but uh, yeah I did not have the space at home and I, I also I mean it was it was just this this very first kind of hmm, nice but I do not have a use for that I don't need that it's just great to look at so the very first spark basically then around 2011 a couple of my friends uh, all around started uh, buying kits all of a sudden so a bunch of of, of of geeky friends actually um, and yeah that that was basically this feeling like okay the hits are coming closer and this stuff is still interesting for me but I still do not have the space at home because back then I was still living in a fairly small flat and uh, yeah I mean it, it was just large enough basically for for me and DSO and uh, a big table with our PCs and a place to sleep and, and that was basically it so it was not nothing large no no place to put a 3d printer or even think about putting a 3d printer but early 2012 we moved into a bigger flat and then suddenly that yeah that that nagging feeling of hey wouldn't it be nice you know uh, just to look what you can do with this stuff that returned and um so I, I did not have any concrete ideas what to do with a 3d printer but this this yeah this 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 need to have one increased and increased and so finally in november 2012 I, I i had enough of pondering and pondering and just said okay i'll do that and i bought one and, and then uh, it was one of the original ultimaker kits back then and uh, I had a blast assembling it and when it printed for the first time I felt like uh, back when I was a little child on Christmas and I was totally thrilled and couldn't stop watching it. Um, but then uh, only a couple of days later I started to get complaints from the SO about the noise and the smell and uh, I mean this is our shared office here. Um, and uh, he, uh, he he basically said, is there any way that we do not have this sitting on the floor here? And well, while I'm trying to game or concentrate or something, and I said, okay, I will look into it. And the Raspberry Pi had just come out in that year and I looked for solutions, couldn't find one and wrote my own basically. And this is, yeah, where all this led to. Um, and uh, yeah, so these days, I, I I do have a printer back in the office all the time, so as you can see over my shoulder there. Um, DSO basically has given up at this point. Um, and um, what I usually print during uh, working on Octoprint is, is usually really small and fast prints. So these days I have to admit, and please do not curse me for that, um, that I print a lot of fidget spinners not because I then try to sell them or assemble them or anything, but because I've uh, found that this particular shape is totally great for um, yeah for testing that I do not have any regressions in my communication layer because you have lots of curves and curves are basically little lots of little line segments and uh, when you have to stream those line by line then uh, yeah you can quickly find bottlenecks with these kinds of prints. And uh, yeah, so this is usually what I put out a lot of during the day. So just a couple of layers, basically, I do not print the whole thing just to see that everything is still fine. And um, what I also sometimes print is uh, when I uh, need a little or um, yeah, um, diversity. Uh, yeah, copies of stuff that I designed to solve actual problems here around the house. And this brings me to what I uh, actually do print outside of Octoprint development. So um, at this point, I think this printer is, is, is mostly really used to fix things around the flat. So um, we, for example, we just, um, um, yeah, we, we just solved a little issue we had with our panlets in the kitchen using that printer. So we, we I basically designed a couple of um, holders for them to attach to the wall and then have everything organized and no longer cluttering up our um, yeah our cupboards and this is really great and working fine of course uh, like every uh, 3d printer owner i guess i also print a lot of uh, design and print a lot of stuff for the printer itself to improve it which you can see everything in orange back there is printed and um yeah, what else? Also a couple of enclosures for my uh, little electronics projects here and there. And what I'm currently also working on is um, 
basically a design for my, uh, yeah, for some way to mount all my Raspberry Pi test cluster um, devices so that they fit vertically underneath my, my monitor so that I always can access them, but they do not, yeah, waste too much space. And yeah, I found a couple of things on Thingiverse, but I was not completely happy with all, uh, all of them. So I just whipped something up. Um, and I'm, I'm slowly and steadily, hopefully, um, uh, improving on them during my weekends and such. Um, and yeah, so this is basically what I do. Um, in a nutshell, to come uh, back full circle to the original question, I think what made me want to 3D print originally was really mostly a fascination with the technology without having any actual use case at all. So. It really was a case of want and not need, <laughs> but I mean, that's fine, right? <laughs> and uh, yeah, look where that led to. <laughs> Sometimes life can be weird. All right. Um, that was that, what, that what was that question. I'm sorry. I'm really stumbling more over my tongue these day, uh, today than usual. I don't know why. I'm sorry for that. Please bear with me. Um, okay, so the next question was by James, and he asked any plans to integrate with uh, with if this then that. So this this little um, some, yeah mini automation tool for various uh, web services um, that you can use to do some nifty things. Um, so the problem with with if this then that is that. Um, they uh, keep it fairly closed. So I think something like two years ago or so, they created this maker channel or one year ago. I'm not even sure. And uh, Mark Walker, um, aka Mark, uh, Mark Wall, he even wrote a little Octoprint plug in to integrate with this maker channel, basically just uh, yeah, sending the events that Octoprint generates there. The problem with this maker channel is that it is, yeah, it is really, really limited. So you can only, mm, yeah, you can only send, I think, th three parameters with your messages and um, yeah, there is not, not much of, of real automation that you can do. Um, the, the, it, it, there's just not much, yeah, not much flexibility in how they did that. And uh, I mean, it's an option and there is a plugin that basically allows you to make use of it of that option. Uh, I also wanted to quickly throw you the URL in the live chat. And I also, uh, yeah, link that later in the, in the video description. And the plugin is called Octoprint. And um, I think it's not on the official repository because it simply is, yeah, I think he, he mostly wrote it as a kind of work, uh, um, no, proof of concept, but uh, I'm sure that you can, t uh, you, you can probably use it in one way or another. I personally have, to be honest, never really looked at it. Um, because, yeah, I mean, if this then that basically bases its whole business model on the services that they integrate with paying them a lot of money and for, for, for having the opportunity to integrate with, uh, if, the, with, if this then that APIs and yeah, this is something that simply doesn't work for, for an open source piece of software. So not only because of the money situation, but also because, um, if they have, if they have you pay for accessing their API, then the keys in, to to yeah to to be allowed to access those API have to be kept completely secret and yeah good luck with that in an open source application so I don't see this ever becoming better than what the Maker Channel currently offers unless of course they update that or add something yeah similar to it um, yeah but right now yeah we do not have any better option than than what is already implemented basically with this plugin. So yeah, sorry for the bad news, but yeah, if this then that simply is not really compatible, sadly, to um, open source. All right. Um, another question by James. Any chance that you could provide a better history function to show duration of prints 
and counts of how many times the same print has been done, even if the name is different. So um, thing is, there already exist various plugins for exactly these kinds of statistics. And personally, I do not see why I should now yeah, plan on writing and maintaining yet another one that then basically yeah, competes with the existing ones. And um, the thing is that um, Octoprint does track the file hash of a file that you upload. And this hash is something that does not change when the file contents do not change. So even if you upload the file under a different name, the hash would be the same. And this information is also available on the plugin API. And plugin authors, for example, the authors of those existing statistic plugins, they could use this uh, to do exactly what you want. And um, yeah, I yeah, I can't do much more than that without starting to basically compete with them. And this is not the point of having a plugin system, you know. Um, what I am looking into is uh, yeah, adding ways to easier persist additional metadata with the files that you upload into Octoprint. So this might be interesting so that you, yeah, what whatever else you need can can be persisted easier with that from a statistic module, for example. What is already collected is the number of prints or rather all the dates of the prints, which you can then sum up as a number. So it would be easy to access this kind of data. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is that basically what I, what I understand you, what I understand what you want is already possible. And basically from Octoprint side implemented, you, you just need to have someone extend their statistic plugin to utilize that kind of information. Or maybe one of them already does exactly that. And I just don't know it, sorry. Um, and uh, this makes way more sense and scales way better than me trying to do everything uh, myself and doing it all on my own. So this was the whole base, uh, the whole point of the plugin system, basically allowing you guys from the um, from the community to uh, those of you that are at least um, interested in, in getting your hands dirty with code to uh, to add functionality. And I'd rather concentrate on making this easier and uh, better documented and uh, yeah, more powerful and all that instead of trying to compete with you and also do all that on top of everything else, maintenance and development and blah. Yeah. So this is basically a repeating uh, pattern in, in, in my replies by now, I think that that uh, I always say write plugins, but this was the whole point because um, Octoprint is a really, really huge project and I'm the only one working full time on it and it is not enough. So I do not want to, um, yeah, to basically take even more of my resources off of actual development on the platform itself of making it easier for people and all that, um, to add functionality that other people can also add easily. If this makes sense in a way, I um, I really want to rather help people do it themselves and make this kind of like a, a working ecosystem, not just with me trying to keep it alive, but everyone basically. Yeah, I hope this makes sense and I have explained myself well. I'm not sure right now. <laughs> Anyhow, okay. So um, the next question was by Bill, who asked, uh, I run HA proxy as a front end to Octoprint, and I would like to use some authentication to access Octoprint itself. Do you have any suggestions on how to how that might be done? Um, first of all, those of you who don't know, HA proxy is also what is on every single Octopi image. It's it's what makes it possible that you access Octoprint not through octopi.local double um, colon five thousand, but directly. So directly on port eighty and with HTTPS as well and all that. Which uh, and also that the webcam is located under octopi.local slash webcam slash and not uh, octopi.local. Uh, port 8080 and then some cryptic path and all that. So um, what I'm now going to demonstrate and I actually prepared uh, something here is something that everyone can do um, with the Octopi instance in order to uh, tighten it down a bit more 
And this is something that you especially should do if you have a port forward in your router, a router conf configured to point to your Octoprint instance, because, um, yeah, I mean, you should always use as much security as possible. I don't know if you uh, heard, but just yesterday there was uh, another big vulnerability that uh, basically yeah, brought down huge parts of government uh, institutions and stuff like that. And I do my best to keep Octoprint secure, but you should not trust me on this. And you should always take additional measures to keep yeah, J random hacker from accessing your Octoprint instance without you allowing it. Um, the best way, by the way, to do that is to use a VPN, a virtual private network. There are a bunch of tutorials around the net to how, how to set something up like that to, uh, yeah, while you're on the go, on the go to access everything that is in your local network in a secure way that no one can uh, eavesdrop on and that no one can basically piggyback on. And this is something that I really would advise any one of you to do that are looking into that kind of stuff. But what I'm going to show you now is at least one bit already of uh, limiting things a bit more. So I'm now going to attempt to switch you over to my other screen. Um, which button was that again? I hope you're seeing that now. Okay. Um, so what we have here is a simple SSH session that I created and put it to, to an Octopi installation. So um, just the, the common stuff where you log in, log in with your user Pi and the password, whatever you set it to, or Raspberry. If you did not change it, please change your password. And um, I'm now going to show you how to set up uh, yeah, basic authentication that is located before Octoprint. So uh, basically one, one layer above it, and that helps a bit to keep things more secure and also denies everyone access to anything that is uh, served by IHA proxy, including your webcam. So um, let's get started here. Um, what you have to do for that is uh, explained in the HA proxy documentation. And I'm also going to paste a link to that in the live chat and will later link it also in the video description. And um, first of all, you will need to have to edit the HA proxy configuration file. And uh, that is located at etc HA proxy HA proxy dot CFG. So and you will need to do for that. So we are going to do that now. So this is now the configuration file. And then what you will have to do is hit the wrong button in VI, no, is define a user list. And we will just call it Octoprint users, but you can call it whatever you want. Um, this just, yeah, is something that you can probably remember well. And then you have to define at least one user. We'll just call him my user. And for now, I get to back uh, get back to that in a sec. We'll just define the unsecure, insecure password. And insecure means it's written down plain text in this configuration file, my password. So now we've done that. Now we've defined the user list, but we would still have to tell HA proxy what to do with that. So you see here this front end called public. And this is basically um, what you connect to when you connect to your Octopi instance or Octoprint instance, you actually connect to HA proxy's public front end. And this is also what then redirects to the webcam when the path begins with webcam and otherwise it uh, reconnects you to Octoprint. Um, and what we do now is in order to make sure that no one can access either the webcam or Octoprint itself, we will add an access control based on this user list that we defined up there. So what we will do is say is ACL, then we give that ACL a name. In that case, we will call it valid octoprint. I can't type today apparently either. Valid octoprint user. And we will say that this ACL is fulfilled when there was successful HTTP authentication for the user list octoprint users. So this is the first step. 
Now we've defined the ACL, but we still haven't ta uh, told HA proxy what to do with it. So that's, this is the next step. What we will tell it to do is um, to uh, pu push out an, um, yeah, this, this little authentication pop-up thingy for the Realm Octoprint if this ACL up there, so valid octoprint user, if this ACL does not match the, the little exclamation mark in front of it, um, says not. So if someone has authenticated, this one will not match. If they have not yet authenticated, instead request authentication for the realm octoprint realm. In that case, it's just a name again that you, you could also call this uh, foo or not, and it would still work. And uh, yeah, that will then will happen. Now we have to save that. This is a VI, sorry for that. I um, You save there that way. And uh, after that, we have to restart HA proxy. So before I do that, you see here, I have a regular octopi.local instance that takes a bit to resolve the host. Um, then when it does, it just loads normally. I could now log in there. I could, if one was connected, I could see the webcam here. Um, but if we now do this and we have I focused? No, I have not focused. If I knew that this, suddenly this happens. And uh, if I say cancel, stuff will keep f asking me for authentication. And uh, if I reload this, I, uh, no, if I reload this, I would instead expect to, again, exactly, I see this one again. And now I can log in here with my user and my password that we defined earlier. And then unless I mistyped what I did not, hooray, uh, I will, yeah, I will be back in there. But unless someone knows those two, this, this, this those user credentials that you defined in the HA pro proxy config file, no one will be able to um, log in or, or even to see the page at all. Okay, um, now I told you, remember, uh, I hope you remember this bit here that this insecure password part is uh, so that you can write the password for the user pl as plain text into this configuration file. Usually this is totally sufficient because probably only you will have access to this, uh, to this, this instance and this configuration file. But just in case um, you want to make this a bit more safe, I'll now show you how, because you can also write the, the password in there in a, uh, yeah, basically not as the plain text password, but, but as a hash of the plain text password, making stuff more se uh, secure because um, reversing the hash is basically, yeah, I wouldn't say impossible, but at least not impossible, uh, not not possible in a in, 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 in a sensible kind of way. Um, what we will need for that though is to install a package first. sudo apt-get install who is, and after installing that, let's wait for it. Sometimes it takes a bit. It's a pie after all. Um, after that, what we have now is a new um, a new command called make password. And this make password command, we can tell that we want to make a, a basically want to make a password hash with the SHA-512 hash uh, function. And if we now hit enter, it will ask us the password that we want to hash. So we type in my password. It will not be shown there. This is also for security reasons. And hit enter. And then it throws out this long random looking string. And this one we can then put into our user list instead. So we just remove the unsecure dash in front of the password. And then we put in the hash. And I hope <laughs> that this will still work. Yeah. 
and it still authenticates fine. So this worked out fine. And uh, yeah, so this is basically how you add basic authentication to Octoprint. The only problem, of course, is, or what, what, not, not problem necessarily, but um, you now have to first authenticate by via the basic authentication, and then you also have to log in here if you haven't already. Um, so this is something though that I actually briefly looked into yesterday or the day before yesterday, I don't know right now. And um, I think it would be possible to write a plugin for solving this issue so that it basically, you could basically um, configure your users in HA proxy and then Octoprint would match what it gets from this central browser managed login dialog with with uh, its own user database and then would log you in. Um, the only problem with that is that basic authentication in the browser does not not really allow you to log out. So the only way to log out then would be to close the browser because this is the only way to clear those credentials. So this is a design of uh, a design feature basically of these kind of authentication mechanisms and nothing that I can really get around. But yeah, I still wanted to mention it in case you're interested. So um, now I'm going to switch back to myself. Okay, hi. <laughs> and um, yeah, now I've lost my train of thought. Ah, right, okay, so that was that question. And um, now I'm just going to take a look briefly over there if there were any like, yeah, there was actually one question. Um, Mar Ak asks, uh, do you know how many people actually installed RC or dev versions? So you can guess if you have to wait for reports. No, I don't know. And this is the reason why um, I also earlier asked uh, that you please give me feedback. Also, if it's just thumbs up, everything is great kind of feedback on um, release candidates and why I've now started to create a ticket on the issue tracker specifically for that, which is by by the way also linked to from the release announcement on the on, on the Octo blog and also from the change log in the in the yeah in the release notes basically that you get linked to from the update notification in Octoprint itself. And you can also always access but via a setting software update because there's also always a link to the release notes of the current version that you have installed. Dot. No, sorry, of the re of the version that is then the one that you would update to. But in that case, if you are on the release candidate already, this is the version. Yeah. Um, so I do not have any tracking at all in Octoprint. So I do not know who is running what, how many uh, instances there are worldwide. I have absolutely no idea. And I also do not know who is running which version and what kind of release channel and all that. So. I have to admit, this is something that I've been thinking about changing because it's honestly driving me nuts not to know um, what what yeah what you guys are running. I do not know if, for example, if I put out a release candidate, if you are running it or not. I do not know if you put out a stable release, if you are running it or not. So I, I never know. Um, is the silence right now, is, is this basically the silence before the storm because I really broke something and the second that all of you update, um, my mailbox will explode? Or is it um, because everything is fine? So what I'm really thinking about and have been thinking about on and off again um, is building in at least some minimal kind of tracking so that I know what kind of, yeah, what version is running and also know how many systems are running version X versus how many systems are running version Y. And before I now hear you scream out and go mad at me and how could you tracking? Uh, um, rest assured, I will do this in a strict uh, opt in kind of way. So the thing I'm uh, the, the way I'm currently thinking about how I would do this once I decide I actually do want to do this um, is uh, just like it is now asking you to create um, a, a username and a password when you set up Octoprint for the first time and how it also would ask you for additional stuff if uh, through the wizard system if uh, any plugin or uh, any any core function would need some additional input input from you to, to work properly so something like that would I would use to ask you if you are fine with this kind of information um, being tracked 
And if you would say no there and also until you made a decision, nothing would be tracked. So this is the current idea um, that I would use. This is the only thing that I would accept for, for Octoprint, so strictly opt-in. Even though the opt-in in this case would be something that you would be prompted to do. So what I will not do is hide this and hope that some of you will click it because then I'm not off better any, any, any more than I'm now. But uh, yeah, so this is the current train of thought that I have uh, in that way, simply to, to know what is going on, because right now I'm basically flying completely blind and this really, really can suck. <laughs> Sorry for the language. Anyhow, um, yeah, with that being said, I think right now we do not have any more questions from the live chat. and. Uh, looking at the time, I'm not sure if I can tackle any more of the rather lengthy questions that I have prepared for the... Ah, there's one that is not that long. Okay, so we, we just tackle that one now and um, after that I wrap things up. Um, so another question also by James. James was very busy, by the way. <laughs> Thanks, James. Um, what are your big, scary, hairy plans for version two? What is the future? And to be honest, I don't have a big, scary, hairy plan for version 2.0 yet. The only thing that I can tell you is that um, it happens a lot that people ask for functionality that would make Octoprint, if I implemented it, would make Octoprint uh, yeah, backwards incompatible to itself. So it would basically mean that plug -in, some plugins would stop working because things had to shift around too much or um, yeah, things would need some manuals, manual steps by you to, to update to or uh, yeah, stuff like that basically that is very... Um, uh, how do you say? Yeah, very consequential, basically. So these are things that I would definitely target for uh, version 2 and not version 1. Point whatever. And also I have to say that 1.4 is scary enough right now with all the things that I hope I'll be able to tackle in there, like the, the permission system and the com layer and uh, a couple of other things that I already have on the roadmap because I really need to get them out um, to make things easier down the road. Uh, things, of course, that I'm thinking about that I would really like to look at and which definitely would be incomp uh, would be backwards incompatible are is basically a revamp of the whole web interface because yeah I mean this is now for over four, four and a half years old actually in most parts and um, yeah I'm I'm I, I know that it was also a bit a big um, a point of critique in the survey and uh, trust me when I tell you that I am aware that it is looking a bit dated it is not really up to the state of the art it doesn't it doesn't uh, auto resize where, uh, at all and, and things like that and um, I think there would also be some ways now that I better know how you ga you people use these kind of things um, yeah to make the whole interface a bit more streamlined for the regular workflow because the current design is basically still based on, I think, yeah, I, I, I think on the Cura print dialogue back four and a half years ago, how that looked. Because as, as uh, some of you might know, Octoprint basically started out as a little fork of Cura. So back then I just added an option to Cura to fire up a web interface to control Cura and, and its print dialogue through a browser and then down the road people started complaining that they did have to install Cura just to have a fancy web interface and then I stripped Cura away but um, the design just basically still yeah basically mirrors what what I based my my whole work off on off on on off whatever and um, yeah so this would be something that I really would like to get rid of and and make more modern and also more flexible because right now it's a bit hackish in some places I'm, I'm quite happy that i got it as far as i have taken it so far but things could be better and um yeah it might also happen that i'm, I'm with the, with the com refactoring that i'm now the com layer um, revamp that i'm now doing um this one 
this this task that I'm currently working on, this is uh, there, this is something where I'm trying to keep it backwards compatible, so that compatible, well, so that we do not run into any issues. Um, but um, but uh, down the road, I fear that we have to we will have to break a bit of, uh, of of backwards compatibility if we want to achieve. Uh, more stability and more more speeds on the serial layer simply or, or general in general get more um, yeah get more better use out of multi-core systems that are now fairly common with the pies being uh, quad core and uh, everything that is coming out of china as a competi uh, competitor also being uh, multi-core and right now octoprint is also mentioned in a couple of uh, past uh, episodes uh, is simply not really able due to yeah due to python um to to utilize multiple cores and this is also something that would probably be um yeah be something where i'm now trying to work around as much as i can but to really go all in i would probably have to wait until version 2.0 but if the next question that any one of you asks now is, when will we get version 2.0? No idea. Sorry. <laughs> Currently focus on 1.4. And um, when the pressure gets enough, then I will probably say, yeah, let's 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 go all in. Um, Marak, uh, Marak, I don't know how to pronounce the username, just su suggested to use a tarantula as a scary logo for version 2.0 once it hits uh, development and RC versions. Um, I'm not going to do that. I am afraid of spiders, you wouldn't imagine. So no, this is not going to happen. The only eight armed thing that is going to hit Octoprint is the octopus. <laughs> um, yeah, because I do not want to shiver every time that I work on things. You do not, you also do not want me to shiver every time that I work on Octoprint because that would probably not be good for my productivity. <laughs> All right. Um, anyhow, yeah, so this was the last question that I'm going to tackle now, I think. Um, so let's get on to the wrap up part. Um, uh, I don't know how many of you saw the last episode uh, where I mentioned that the live broadcasts for the, the, the ones that were my early morning, Sunday morning hours that I mostly did for the Eastern Hemisphere, uh, that I would put this up to a vote, basically asking people if they actually are watching these because um, because uh, yeah the, the attendance wasn't great so I was usually basically talking to myself uh, with 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 may maybe a small handful of people in the live chat and not much interaction going on and this is not the point of having a live broadcast if I uh, have to wake up way too early for my time zone and then uh, yeah not be on my yeah, basically not be on my full 100% either. Um, so I, I asked you guys if, if, uh, if, yeah, if it would be okay to basically switch this broadcast slot also over to something that is more suited to my own time zone. And all of you located in the Eastern Hemisphere that uh, gave feedback on this question were okay with it. So this is what we are going to do from now on. Um, uh, and and thank a huge thank you for understanding. Um, so the next broadcast uh, will, as, as as this one now, be something sometime around the my afternoon. So I think this is mid more midday and the in the Western Hemisphere is in the US or something, and uh, somewhat late night at uh, in the in the Eastern Hemisphere. And um, yeah, some sometime in 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 four weeks or something. I know this makes it. Yeah, this this after after this one being rescheduled and also a bit delayed due to my wisdom teeth stuff, um, the next one would actually need to be scheduled to come back into the regular schedule around next week or something. But I do not think this must, makes much sense because what would I talk to you about? So we'll just I'll just get back on the on the four week schedule now. And uh, yeah, I mean there will always be some schedule delays here and there simply due to real life getting in the way. And uh, I guess we probably are all aware of that. So let's keep things simple and not too complicated. All right. Uh, with that being said, I still uh, I think I have everything covered that I wanted to cover today. And uh, yeah, all that leaves now is uh, wishing you all happy printing with Octoprint, hopefully. And um, 
yeah, I hope I'll see you next time and uh, wish you all a, a nice rest of the day or, uh, yeah, whatever you would like to hear. <laughs> all right. Bye.